Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about text input scenes and how you can use text input scenes along with some text blocks in your experience. Let's go ahead and get started by creating a new experience and we will quickly select a character. Maybe we'll use this smiling face and we'll say learn about text input scenes. Okay, so I'm going to show you three different ways we can use text input scenes, but there actually are a variety of ways in which text input scenes can be used. So let's add three buttons. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to save a text input, and we're gonna display that in the dialog of a scene. The second thing I'm going to show you is how to validate text, aka check for text, and the third thing I'm going to show you is how to access the number pad. So let's get started. We're going to start with the save text input. Let's add new and we're going to add a text input scene here. Let's go ahead and link that button up to the text input scene. I'll change the character really quick. We'll change it to this birthday cake and we'll say, what is your name? So what we're doing here is asking them to type in something using the keyboard and they're going to submit that. We're then going to display it in the very next scene. So what we're doing here is we are asking for the user to enter some text and then we're going to save that text. So in order to save that text, we're going to add a save text block. That's going to be found in the text section and it's here at the bottom, save a text input from a text input scene. Perfect. Now this is going to save it as a user property, so that's going to stay with the user's account, so next time they visit, you will also remember their name. Let's make sure we link it up to the block, and then we need to give it a key name, and this is the name we're going to access when we try to display it in the next scene. So the key name I'm going to use is tutorial text input name and your name should be specific to your experience so now we have our save text block the next thing we're going to do is add a character scene so that we can display that text your name is and then we're going to use some special syntax to display that text so because we're saving a user property we're going to use dollar sign curly brackets not to be confused with parentheses, we want to make sure that we're not using parentheses, otherwise your experience won't work properly. So curly brackets, and then inside the curly brackets we're going to use props, dot, and then we're going to take that key name. So I'm going to copy this and then just paste it right in there. So that's going to display the name that we typed, and you're going to be able to test this at the end of the experience to make sure that it is working. So let's go ahead and add two buttons. One is going to say change name, and then the other one is going to say back to menu. Let's link the save text block to this scene, and then we'll link change name back to the text input scene, and main menu back to our main menu. So that's how you save a piece of text from a text input scene and display it in another scene. Let's move on to validating text, and this is super important. So you're going to use this a lot when you want to have any sort of free response question. Maybe you're asking for a password, maybe you're asking for a specific answer. Let's go ahead and add another text input scene. We'll just put that directly below here. Let's link up the button and let's change the character to something else. I'm going to go into emojis and maybe we will use this showing teeth emoji here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is ask a simple question. The primary colors are red, blue, and blank. So what we're asking for is for them to type the answer then we're going to validate that text. So in order to do that, we're going to go into the Add New menu, go into the Text section again, and we're going to use this Check Text Response block. So this is going to check the text and make sure that what they're typing is the correct answer. 
Always, you're going to find the transition controls by clicking on the keyboard, not the actual scene. If you click on the scene, you'll have access to AR and background and to the timers, but you want to make sure you click on the keyboard so that you can transition to the next scene or block. So let's go ahead and do that. We're transitioning to the block, and now let's look at the block really quick. So text to check for is the area that we're going to be typing our answer. So our answer in this case is yellow. And right underneath that, you can make your answer case sensitive. What that means is when they type their answer, they'll have to type in that capital Y right here. Otherwise, they'll get it incorrect. So if that's on, they'll have to type capital Y. If it's off, the case of the letters don't really matter. So I'm just going to leave that off. And at the bottom, we have two branching paths, one for on response contains, which means the check was a success, and one for on response does not contain, which means they did not type in the correct answer. And because of that, we're going to add two character scenes. You can add whatever you'd like in this section. Let me zoom out. I will drag one here. I will drag one here directly underneath. Okay, zooming back in, let's link these up. We'll go into the block. One will go to the correct path. One will go to the incorrect path. And we'll say something like, you got it. Add a little smiley face. And then the bottom one will say something like, incorrect. Would you like to try again? We'll add a button that says try again and that will link back to our question. This button will say back to main menu and we'll link that back to the main menu. Now let's quickly review. We are saving text using the save text block and displaying that text. Again, that's dollar sign curly brackets and then inside of that is props dot and whatever you named your property. So I named it tutorial text input name. You can name it whatever you want, but it should be specific to your experience. In the second section, we are checking to validate that text. We asked a simple question that requires a one word answer. And in the check text response block, we are checking to make sure they type the word yellow because that's the correct answer. If they successfully type yellow, they're going to a successful path. If they do not type yellow, then they're going to the incorrect path. So the last thing I want to show you is how to access number pads. So to access number pads, we're going to add another text input scene. And I'm just gonna drag this one also underneath this scene here. There we go. Let's move these up just to condense the space a little bit. Awesome. And while we're here, let's go ahead click on the button and transition to our number pad scene here. So let's change the character one more time. Back in emojis, we'll use the rocket. Now what we're gonna do is ask for a number. So maybe we'll do a math problem. I'm just gonna type something simple like two plus two equals question mark. And now we can totally type in a number from this keyboard, but since our answer is really only going to be a number, it really makes much more sense to use a number pad. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna click on the keyboard, and then here you'll see keyboard type. We'll click on that, and you'll see that there's two options, text and number pad. If we change that to number pad, it, now we have a number pad in our text input scene. And it's still taking text, it's still going to look for the number, but this time it's much easier to type in the numbers than it would be a regular keyboard. Let's do the same thing we did above. We are going to go into the text section. We will use check text response. Let's drag this block down. There we go. Link up the keyboard to the block. We know that the answer is four, so we'll check for four. And now we have two branching paths, one for correct, one for incorrect. I will zoom out so I can quickly drag these down to the bottom. There's one, here's two. Zoom back in so you can see what's going on. And we will go 
on response contains to the correct scene, on response does not contain to the incorrect scene, and I'm just going to copy the text from above. You got it. You got it. Incorrect, would you like to try again? Incorrect, would you like to try again? We'll add those try again buttons and link back to the question. And we will add back to main menu and link back to the main menu. And there you have it. Let me just quickly go into add new and talk about these other blocks. I'm not gonna really show you how they work in an experience because it's much easier to explain. So response is email is just going to check to make sure that text has a valid email address. It doesn't send an email at all. All it does is look for something at something dot something. Parse alphanumeric will remove any non-alphanumeric characters. Now what that means is percent signs, dollar signs, ampersands, asterisks, parentheses, all that good stuff. It will take it out of your text. Response is number is going to check to see if the response in the text input scene was a number. So if it includes any text at all, it's just like the check text response block. Only if it's not a number, it's going to go to that failure path. Check text length is going to check for the number of characters that were typed. So if your answer has a specific number of characters, Trim will trim any spaces from the beginning or end of the text. So for example, if people are typing in space, 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 then their answer is space, space, space. It will only show their answer. We already covered save text in this tutorial. Uppercase text and lowercase text will make all of the text that was input into a single case, depending on whether you want it to be all capitalized or all lowercase. And then finally, passes rejects validation is just like responses email, except for you can add your own rejects validation. Now I'm not gonna explain rejects validation. This is an advanced feature. So if you're curious about that, I recommend that you Google it. Okay, so that is all of the text blocks and we explored text input scenes. Let's go ahead and publish our experience. Call this tutorial text input scene. We'll publish the experience. Let me zoom in so you can get a bigger QR code. There you go. Feel free to scan this QR code and test out this experience for yourself. I hope you learned a lot about text input scenes in this video, and we will see you next time.